YouTube is creeping on. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody on YouTube. I'm going to, you can see me a little bit better. Welcome to Lure Painting Live, uh, Saturday night edition. Actually, it's Friday, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I might have to go to Saturday just because of other competing um, live uh, shows. I keep moving them around so I don't overlap people because I know some people watch multiple different uh, painters and stuff. So um, I'll eventually go back to Saturdays. But right now, I, I couldn't do Saturday. We've got a company picnic with um, the husband's work. So I had to squeeze it in tonight. And I apologize for my absence the last few weeks. I've just had so much going on with the kids and the end of summer and back to school and trying to cram in all these activities before school starts. Um, and then my daughter's class already got pulled out of school for uh, somebody. They won't tell us really what happened, but there was an exposure to COVID somewhere. So yay, already. It was literally they were in school for like three days. And they got pulled out. So next week, she'll be home all week. So I got that to look forward to. <laughs> At least it's one kid and not two. So I'll quit blabbing. And uh, I'll pull up the feed on my own Facebook here. If you're watching on YouTube, if you click on the description, you will see my uh, link to my website where you can order from. If you enter live, L-I-V-E in caps and the number 15 by through Sunday, the... 22nd, you can get 15% off everything that's in stock. Um, I already had a 15% off my clearance items. I've dropped some prices. I've added some items to the clearance. And so your 15% will be good on clearance and regular price through Sunday only. And then after that, it's just 15% off clearance for now. So um, why is it making me log in? Really? Touch ID? Sorry, guys. I was uh, doing some other stuff on this and Anyway, so bath swim bait tonight. Um, they, these are some. These are really nice. I believe these have the magnetic hook hangers inside of them. Um, yeah, like I'm like almost almost positive. So this will um, like the the hooks will stick up on the belly, and um, I think I think on the tail, but we might have to test it because I'm not 100. percent I haven't uh, tested that in a while. I know the Mega Bass knockoffs do have that, and then um, I believe them as well. So um, we're, I'm going to do a shoal bass. So if you're not familiar with what a shoal bass is, it's um, I believe more uh, it's, it's a type of bass that's more common like in Florida and surrounding areas. So you may not have seen one, you know, anywhere near you. But they kind of look like a smallie, but their markings are a little bit different. Um, they just have different stripes and um, their coloration is uh, a tad greener, I would say. So um, we're going to do that. I, I did these up for um, a, a customer's request last week. They turned out really nice. So I figured why not do them tonight. So I'm still trying to pull up your comments on here. It's given me a hard time. So give me just, just a minute before I can see your comments. My internet connection has been slow lately and there's no explanation for it, which is frustrating. We only have satellite. Uh, that's all we can get out here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, Stylo Res Primer, which is what I always use um, as a primer. This will help your paint stick a little bit better than just priming it with an acrylic um, paint. I still do a base coat of acrylic, but I also use the Stino Res um, as, a, as a primer first. And the reason for that is because um, acrylic paint has a tendency to, um, to if it's not, um, I don't know how to explain it. If it, in some cases, if your clear coat gets compromised and you get paint underneath your um, clear coat, uh, the acrylic paint doesn't stick very well. It's not, it doesn't adhere to the plastic very well. It's not really intended for plastic, per se. Um, Createx paints and acrylic paints are more, you know, for t-shirts and um, canvases and stuff like that. Plastics, not so much. Um, so they do have a little bit of a hard time sticking. Um, so the Stenol Res really helps that. It's an acrylic polyurethane, um, and it just really adheres better. And you'll notice that if you try and take it off. 
Um, I usually, when I'm trying to remove paint from something, like if I screwed up or I want to start over or I made a mistake and I just want to remove an area and fix it or whatever, usually I will use um, some alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, or you can get denatured alcohol too. Um, anyway, uh, it's a little harder to get it off. You really have to scrub this stuff off, even with alcohol, whereas with like just an acrylic paint, a normal acrylic paint, you could just literally wipe it off uh, with like a paper towel and some um, alcohol or like a rag and some alcohol, you would be able to wipe it right off. Uh, the final res doesn't come off quite so easy and that's why I like it. So it is made by Badger. You can buy it on Amazon, uh, but they sell it on USA Airbrush Supply, which is where Badger sells a lot of their a lot of their parts and stuff. You can get there too. So anyways, I always recommend it because I just really do think it makes a big difference. And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do a white base coat on top of that. This is um, Wicked Detail Flat Opaque White. I had a hard time finding this to reorder it. I don't know if they're making it still, um, but you could just, you know, any Wicked White I think is better than um, regular Createx White, which is somewhat chalky, uh, but either one will work. I just think that one is better than the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab you the discount code and the link to, um, you can actually click on this link. It'll take you straight to the website and you can, your the discount code will automatically be applied. They, add this, they added this feature to, um, Shopify, which is the provider I use for my for my website, they added this feature now where you can um, just click here. You'll have to let me know if it works. So I just it's taken a minute for that to load, but it should in a minute. There we go. So let me well let me pin it though. No. Huh. It won't let me pin it. Weird. Let me click on my video and see if that changes my abilities. Anyway, I'm going to put this base coat on here. And for those of you on YouTube, um, I didn't get this link over there. I think I might have put it in the description, actually. I can't remember, but there's the link to my website. You just need to add live 15 to get 15% off. And I did, I put some um, new uh, bleeding bone to square belts and drip tapes in the store. So uh, check that out. And then of course the new bleeding cross are in there. Some nice perch that I did recently. Tiger trout in square bills. Uh, I think I sold out of the tiger trout swim bait. There may be one or two, but they're mostly gone. And then um, I have lots of stuff on clearance from the spring that hasn't sold yet. And so check that stuff out. You can get a good deal. Hello, Arthur. <laughs> get a teenager to work on my phone. Uh, hello, Peter, John. Uh, I, use a, I, use a, well, I use UV resin. There's a few different types. You can get um, UV resin on Amazon, a lot of different brands that are made in China. And then um, I also use Illumi UV, but um, they all work about the same and you get the same finish. So I've been doing double coats. You have to be careful because they get heavy. Um, so I've been doing double coats now because I think that I'm getting a little bit of thinness on the noses and stuff. It does take more time, but that should be really durable by then. Um, and it works really good. I It takes very little time. I mean, I can have them cured in an hour and ready to put hooks on. That's the nice thing about Lumi UV. <clears throat> Rob, hello. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, sorry guys for the absence. Hi, Tim. Hello, David. A timber lure market. Hello, Dennis, Joseph. 
Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate your kind words. Hi, Anthony, Rodney. Share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate the shares so much. Oh, awesome, Anthony. I appreciate your orders, everybody. I appreciate any and all orders. And I appreciate you sharing my feed and anything you can share. All right. So all I'm doing here is um, I'm doing, I think I have a clog. See this bubbling up? I think the tip of my brush is clogged. So I'm going to finish doing this and I'll just get to switch brushes because I cleaned a bunch of my brushes uh, recently. And I think I really gave this one a workout the last few weeks. So it's like, no more, please. So I'm just putting a light coat of black and this is going to be the base for my scale pattern. And this is just a uh, wicked detail black, but I like any of the wicked. I like the detail colors because you don't have to thin them as much. They're, they're just thinner already. And it just takes a little bit of uh, time out of the equation, like mixing and stuff like that. So, sorry, I have a motion light in here and I should turn on my other light, but it gets so bright when I do that, that I kind of try not to. Okay, I'm going to clean this out then and we're going to go on to like a pearl white and I'm just going to put a scale pattern on here. So if you didn't hear what I'm doing, I'm doing a shoal bass and I'm going to repin, I'm going to try repinning this discount at the bottom here and I'm going to see if I can pin it because it won't let me, it wouldn't let me last time. Oopsie. Oh my God, what did I do? Stickers, no, I don't want stickers. I'm just pressing too many buttons. Okay, now it's gonna let me pin it. So you have to go about it a certain way or it just won't let you do it. So there we go. So if you click on that link, it'll take you um, right to my store and you'll automatically get the discount. You won't have to enter code. So no worrying about forgetting. I'm gonna clean this with a little alcohol just in case there's some build up in there. I'm going to get as much of it as I can out. So I just use a little paintbrush, like a disposable paintbrush to clean my, um, the inside, any of the paint that's dried and some alcohol out of the cup. I stir it around and then I spray it, dump it, wipe the inside out and then rinse with water. And then I'll just disconnect this and I'll use a different brush. There's nothing wrong with it. I probably just have some dried paint in the in the tip in the um, nozzle that I need to clean out. So I have another one just like it, ready to go. We're all good. All right. So I use a lot of Badger brushes. I really like the Badger Patriot um, and the Extreme Patriot. You can make those either of them into a 0.5 or a 0.3, and that's what I primarily use. Uh, I do have a point two, a chrome, a badger chrome, and I barely ever use it because I just don't feel it's necessary. I can pretty, I can pretty well draw fine lines without um, a point two. It's just a technique, um, and once you get the technique down, um, it doesn't really matter too much. I don't think what size brush you use, but some people really like the point two. It's totally personal preference. So this is pearl, I'm sorry, this is auto air pearl white. It's made by Createx as well. Um, it's just another line and I have no worldly idea what the difference between auto air, wicked and I know that the wicked and the auto air are better quality paint than the regular Createx, which you'll see by the price. Um, and you can tell when you use them too, but other than that, I don't really know what they're designed for per se. So here's some white in there. I put a little bit of reducer. This is uh, 4013, I think. And then I'm going to take some mesh. So this is just a, everybody's seen this. If you've ever watched Allure Painter, we use these, um, they're cross stitch, cross stitch holders. And, um, put mesh of any kind that you can find. You can do shower loofahs. You can find different meshes at like um, fabric stores or Walmart, wherever they sell fabric. Or you can cut it out of shirts. I mean, wherever you can find like a good pattern that might make a nice scale. 
So I'm just going to put a piece of paper towel behind this. I like holding it in my hand. It's a little easier uh, sometimes. Let me see if I missed any comments. What have I done? What have I done? My comments are really super slow. Uh, and share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate the shares. Get the word out about my sale and all that if you can. So I am going to now try and push this up against the mesh as best as I can. Okay, so I've got my hand back here and I'm pushing against the mesh. Okay, and then I'm going to spray straight at the bait and I'm going to use this pearl color. So I have um, the mesh lined ver up vertically here and I'll go a little heavier on the top, but I don't want to go too heavy because again, with water-based paint, you uh, kind of need to dry in between. I never got my hair dryer out because I forgot. So hang on. Didn't think of that one. I use a primarily um, lacquer paints when I'm not on my show dry almost instantly. So no hair dryer necessary. But they are much more toxic, which is why... Normally, I have my paint booth going, and I'm sucking the fumes out, and I'm wearing a respirator. But I only do this show once a week normally. Lately, I've been slacking because I've been busy. But I always wear a respirator when I'm painting, unless I want, unless I'm doing my show, so that you guys can hear me better. So again, I'm just doing uh, a few layers without moving the mesh until I get the color I'm looking for. And all of this, all this hair dryer is doing in between is just drying it so that I don't have to wait. You don't have to do that. There's no other purpose for it besides that. Okay. So this side is basically done. I'm just going to um, dry it a little bit so that when I pull off the mesh, I don't smear it. Okay, so I'm going to set this down so I don't move it and then pull that off. So there's your scale pattern. And this is still a little bit wet. It's a little darker than I wanted it to be, but it'll be okay. I should have used... Um, you know what, on the other side, I'm gonna switch paint. I'm gonna use a different paint on the other side and I'm gonna see if it makes a, a difference. The first time I did this pattern, I did it with lacquer paints. So my, it's not gonna come out. This, I'm not necessarily gonna know how these things are gonna turn out until I try them. So this is Pearl White by Aztec, Testers Aztec, and this is more opaque. Um, usually the auto air ones are fairly opaque, but this is not as opaque as they were like. I don't think this is quite dry yet, so give me just one second here. Thank you, Jopi. Appreciate it. Sorry about my psycho kid running through the garage yelling. Normally they know better, but they're not listening today. Okay, it is super hot in here, by the way. It's like, it was like 95 today and it is still 90, it's 84, but it feels like 95, super hot. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other side now and press this up. Just get this done. Always make sure you spray somewhere else besides your bait first. Because you never know how that paint's going to come out on the first spray. It could come out, like, if you just rinsed it and then put, you know, some paint in, it might come out runny at first and splatter or smear everywhere. Or it might just, your airbrush might just decide to puke everywhere. You just never know. So, try and make a habit of not spraying right on your face but rather, you know, spraying downward first to see if your flow is good and then spraying your Anyway, I just ran out of paint, but I think that's good. 
So let's see if I can even tell the difference in the color. So this is the Aztec white. This is the Aztec white right here. Okay. And this is the uh, Createx. So see how the Aztec is a little bit more opaque. Honestly, it's not a huge difference. I would say that the Createx looks a tad more on the silver side over the black uh, versus the Aztec, which is really opaque, so it looks more white. But it's, I honestly don't know if you'll even be able to tell the difference in the finished product. Okay, moving right along, let's do um, some green shading. So I'm gonna do a little bit of moss green, and I knew, I know you knew that, that was coming, because it is the, the fish color that everybody uses all the time when they're doing realistic fish. So I'm gonna thin it way down just so I can control how green it gets, how fast. I might even go a little thinner than that. I already have it pre-thinned in that bottle and I'm adding more reducer because you don't wanna get so thin that you can't get it to dry or that it washes out. Um, but I've got it pretty runny. Like it's at best skim milk consistency. So you don't always have to have it that thin. A lot of people will tell you that you do, but it's more just what it, it depends what you're doing, how thin you need it to be. I'm going to put this on a um, helping hands. And the reason is only because if you hold the bait in your hand while you're spraying it, see like I hold it like this, right? And I'm spraying it. What will end up happening is you'll get little thumbprints on the belly from the overspray because you will get a little overspray even if you're really careful. You'll still get a little bit. So it's best if you don't hold it while you're doing this. I I like to hold my odors while I paint. So uh, it's kind of hard for me not to, but that's why. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please share the feed if you can. Hey, Paul. Hey, Joseph. All right. So I'm just kind of pointing downward. I can't leave this paper towels in front of me because they pull all over here. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm concentrating most of the paint on the the top half and I'm letting it kind of go downward. And that's just so you get a fade. Um, I don't want to go too, too green on the belly, but I, I want it to be a little bit colored. So I'll just give it a little mist there and then Okay, so I think that's good. So there's the green, the, the moss green on top. The colors don't look as bold on YouTube as I would like them to, and I don't really have a good solution to that problem, but um, it could just be my computer that makes it look that way too. So I'm just doing the other side, same thing. That side got greener than the other side. My paint started coming out faster for whatever reason. It's a little greener than I wanted it to be. Oh well. It's all good. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this for the most part, okay? So I dumped out everything except for the residue that was left in there and I am going to um, I'm going to put some brown in here. This is sepia. And um, I'm just going to tone the top edges and a, a little bit around the face and stuff with this. It's clogged. These get so gunked up. If you paint lures, you already know that. I have pantyhose in here because this sepia uh, has, has all these little like particles in it that make my brush get clogged. So I put pantyhose in here. You see that? Put pantyhose like around the spout to help filter out some of that crap. It helps a little bit, but it doesn't cure the problem. I have two layers in there and it does okay, but I still have a hard time doing detail work with stuff yet. I just need to buy some new, but I keep forgetting. I don't use it very often, so I'm not that motivated. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna um, do along the top here, and I'm just kind of spraying along the top sides, muddying it up a little bit so it looks a little more, uh, you know, mucky like bass look. Uh, you can go along the spine if you want to. I'll hit that up with another color to you later. So, um, either way. So, yeah, it looks it's funny though when you go over these two different paints. They look different. It looks different when, uh, you know, like. So this side is the. Stupid motion light. So this side is the. Createx, and then this is the testers. This is the tester side is definitely less shiny than the Createx side. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that's the tester side and that's the Createx side. Maybe you can't tell the difference. I don't know. All right. Um, at the bait, this is, um, I forget what this is a KO of, but they swim really well. Good, good so, so I'm going to shade the face just a little bit in brown here. And I'm going to rinse this out real quick. And then I'm going to go on to, I'm going to try something. And I don't know if it's going to work. So we're going to do, first I'm going to do the face um, texture. And then we're going to do the stripes. And I don't know if this color is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it and, uh, on one side. And if it doesn't work out very well, then I'll do something different on the other side. OK. So I'm going to get this uh, Testers Aztec white pearl out again. And I'm going to do a little texture around the face. So I have a stencil I'm going to use that you see me use a lot in my show and it is the modeled stencil by this is by um, anarchy models and they're in the uk and this is a great texture stencil for fish they he makes a bunch of different ones that are really good for fish but they do ship from the uk so you will it take i got my last order came like in a week and a half so i'm just doing this around around behind the eye along the gill plate area so you can see there's just a little bit of texture there around the gill plate area you can see that and i'll put that on the other side too and fish kind of have that like dotty appearance right around the gill plate a lot of them do anyway oh, that was weird it mixed a little bit with the brown, but it still looks like. So I just did the other side. Same exact thing on the other side. Okay, so it just gives it a little lifelike texture. So I'll clean that out, rinse this out real quick, and then we will put some raw umber in. This is a color I don't use a lot of. It's called Detail Raw Umber. It is uh, it's used for shading a lot and definitely can use it for bass. So I'm gonna put. I'm not gonna um, thin it a lot. It's like a mucky brownish, grayish, greenish kind of color, and I'm just putting a tiny bit of reducer in there just to let it get it blowing a little bit better. It's a, a pretty transparent color all by itself, so I wouldn't maybe just a tiny bit more. <laughs> I like putting my reducer in those bot in these little ketchup bottle thingies. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. It helps you to control how much you pour out a lot easier than like the bottle that comes out of it's a mess. So here's my uh, stencil that I used for this shoal bass, and I made this myself with. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, I actually made a post about this stencil and how I do it. And um, so if you're curious about that, just visit my Facebook page and look for that post I posted about. A week ago or something so I do make my own stencils and I do uh, make them directly from photos of fish that I find online so I I have my methods and uh, if you want to learn more about that just go look on my page and there are if you have any questions you can message me and I'll try and help you but 
it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just lining this up with bait. So it's all lined up, right? So I'm gonna spray right through here, nice and light until I get the desired darkness, which is um, not completely opaque, but So again, just um, fairly dark, but not too dark. <clears throat> so that's about how dark I want it to be, roughly. Okay, and I, I'm gonna do the rest of it. And then um, I can kind of move this around and then put it back in place, it's not too hard to get it right. And it doesn't, these lines don't have to be like super precise. My kid is out there yelling like he's dying. I'm pretty sure he's playing. Like my daughter would come get me if something was wrong. But Chris is mowing. Never a dull moment, everybody at my house. Okay, so now I've got the stencil down on this side. So it looks pretty natural. This color looks turned out pretty good. So it's kind of like that mucky color, right? So that was pretty good. So let's do the other side. I kind of have a hole in this stencil, and I think it was because there was like, I don't really know why behind that, I don't know why there's nothing right here. So I don't know if I missed one of them or if somebody's finger was in the picture there. So I'm just gonna put a dot right there because it drives me nuts. I feel like there's a hole there that shouldn't be there. So I'm just gonna put, um, There we go. I filled the hole in with just a random spot to draw it in. So I'm gonna go to the other side now. Um, yes, you too, Chris. I'm having a good week just melting over here in Colorado. Oh yeah, how um, are you? Are you in Colorado, Wesley? Did you find a guide or someplace to fish? Hello, Brian. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Kids first day of school was good, but they're already, my daughter's already been pulled from school because somebody, I think somebody who lived with one of the kids that was in her class tested positive for COVID or something. They won't tell us exactly what happened, but me and another parent have been speculating. So they're out of school already. So, yeah, just fun. So yeah, she's so she'll be at home this week doing a remote learning, and uh, and then it's funny because my son, you know, he'll still be going even though he lives with her. He'll still be going to kindergarten at the same school. It's kind of funny how they do it. But it's good. I mean, they have they they like their teachers and they like their class, and I like having an uninterrupted day to work. But I haven't had too many because they only had, um, they had one day at school last Thursday uh, and then they had only Monday and Tuesday this week because they have to do their literacy testing, you know, so that they can see where they're at as far as like their reading still go. Now it's just the standardized tests or whatever that they do at the beginning of every year, and I think they do them like um, in the middle and then at the end as well. And I don't know why they can't do that during school, but that's just not how they do it, so. I got my daughter's literacy testing done before they announced that they were quarantining her class, so that was good. So I don't have to squeeze that in some other time now. Anyway. Okay, so the other side is all stenciled up. So there's that. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of shading with the same color along the spine and the eyes. So let me do that real quick here. I'm just gonna keep the same color. This is called raw umber.
you can um you can find pretty much any color of Createx on uh, Spray Gunner's website, or you can go to uh, Coast Airbrush has most everything to do. Some Hobby Lobbies have a really good selection and some have like really a limited selection. Mine has a very limited selection and you'll pay more. I mean, they charge like 50% more because it's a, they have a store, you know, so they don't do much online business. So you're always gonna pay more. You're gonna pay more there. Um, I will probably add a little bit, this is a little browner than I would like it to be, so I'm probably gonna do a little black shading on this. But for the most part, I think I have it, you know, so let me rinse this out, and then we're going to go to um, – I probably will do the black shading first, and then I'll do um, – I'm going to do a little back blending on the belly, and the fin needs to be um, done as well. So I'm going to wait thin this black down, and I'm just going to mist it over the spine and a little bit around the eyes and nose. And I'm going to just be very, very careful not to do too much. I'm just trying to darken it down a little bit because it's very brown, and I don't really want it to be like that brown. This will make it look like more of a brownish green or gray if you just mist it really well thin over time. Okay, that looks good. So so there it is. Demo of that and I'll show you on Facebook too how it looks. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean this out. I am gonna back blend the belly a little bit in white. So the reason I'm doing this is just to get rid of any splatters and give it a nice bright white belly. So I got all the dark colors out of there. I'm gonna put my white back in. I already have this reduced, so no need to reduce it. And then I'm just gonna carefully go, you don't wanna, you don't want to angle it up really because you don't want to get over spray of the white on top of your on top of your work. So you really want to just kind of spray it downward and be careful. Now I got the fin on the bottom there, so I might have to come back and put brown on that. But I'm going to do this fin on top in a brown color. The fin of um, the bass, or the shoal bass at least, is a brown. It's like a uh, like a reddish brown almost color, like a trout kind of. So I'm just getting rid of any overspray. And making sure the belly looks nice and clean white. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, clean this out, and now move on to uh, my color for the fin. Please check out the sale if you haven't already in the pin comment. I put a link to the sale so you can go shop, and it'll automatically give you 15% off. Everything in my store ships um, for free if you spend 50 bucks. So... This is burnt umber, and I'm going to put just a little bit of this in here. If it'll come out, it's clogged. Sorry. These just get, the tips get dried up. So just a little bit of burnt umber, maybe like a drop. And then I'll do sepia and mix them together, because I want it to be like a reddish brown, kind of. Okay. That's gonna be a mess. And I'll add a little bit of reducer and then I'll mix them together and then we'll do a fin. Let me check the color here on my napkin. So I just dab it on a napkin to see what it looks like. I think we'll be good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm, you can grab like any, um, 
curved like line. It doesn't have to be the exact shape of the fin. Because I'm not just going to spray a solid color on the fin. I'm actually going to use the um, use like a curved stencil to shade it strategically. So this is a stencil I use for my big eight inch trout so but I'm going to use it for this. So this had already has like a, a fin on it. So some of them I'll just freehand it on top of the flat surface. But for this one, I'll just take this curve and it fits pretty good over this. So I'm just going to put that on top. So if you can see right here, I'm just lining this curve, the curve of this stencil <laughs> up to the top of the spin here. And then I'm going to shade right along the edge of the stencil. So the overspray goes right onto the fin, if that makes any sense. All right, and I'm going to try and make it darker right along that edge. And if you want it to not overspray, you can just stick your, your finger there. So lots of air, very little paint. This is where trigger control comes into play. And then just checking your work. So you can see there's like that like defined line right at the top there. And that's dark enough. I'm gonna freehand this little area right here where it connects to the body and just darken that up. And then I'm just gonna shade outward a little bit. Oops. I just blotted that with my finger to get up some of the paint that pulled. I kind of jacked that up, but I'm gonna leave that how it is because. I don't know, I kind of screwed it up. I can come back and fix that later if I want to. I got a little bit too much paint going there, but I'll do the other side. Now. Every mistake is fixable. It's whether or not it's better to start, you know, does it take more time to start over or does it take more time to fix it? And that's like a one-off situation. So let me shade here on the top. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, right here, I'm going to shade this area. Okay, so I got a little more overspray there than I wanted to, but I can probably come back and fix that later, but you get the idea. Okay, so I already, I already did the tail. So I did these tails. These are the tails that come with it. Um, these are painted with SB coat paint by Lure Works. It is very toxic. I have this set up for lacquer, so I can do um, toxic as long as you wear the right mask and you wear gloves and you have a good ventilation system. But it is very, very, very stinky, like the worst crap on earth. Um, but if you really want something that sticks to soft plastic or to, um, yeah, soft plastics, that's what you have to use is SB coat. Um, nothing else really works. They have a co lure coat paint um, by Lure Works, but you have to dip it in Plastisol after you paint it. That's a water-based paint. So if you're going to use Plastisol, it kind of defeats the purpose of using water-based paint because that stuff is like the most toxic. Soft plastic melted is the worst smell on it. So there's the tail all browned up. So I'll grab you guys an eyeball that I use for this. Um, every picture that I've ever seen of a shoal bass has a red eye. Um, but, hang on, sorry, I'm not trying to desert you. I'm looking for my eight millimeter eyes. Um, every picture I saw online had a, um, a red eye, but uh, the person who I made these for said that they're not. So. I have no idea. I guess it probably depends on where you live and which variety there is, because you know how you know how that is. So um, I use a natural eye on these. That someday in my lifetime I'll find in this bag. I shouldn't have any trouble buying it because I don't have that many eight millimeter eyes. But you could use definitely like this gold down looker here, like this. You could use that one, but the one that I used was not that one. It's more of a gray gold, if I can ever find the damn thing. Here it is. 
So these are, I think they're called, I don't know what they're called. I found them on, I get a lot of ice from AliExpress uh, because it's cheap and I think ahead and I order everything as I run out. But um, Sugar Tick Custom Lures is a good place to order from. Backwater Outfitting has a lot of eyes. So if you have a good a variety of eyes, uh, Backwater Outfitting has a lot of eyes. So there it is with the eyeball on it. Shoal bass. All right. Does it look like it could swim away? What do you guys think? Anybody? A bluegill in this one? Thank you, guys. So anyway, that's the finished product. I'll post a picture on uh, my Facebook page. Please follow me on Facebook uh, and YouTube. Subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is Colorado underscore custom underscore lures. Uh, and every time I um, post a new design that I have in stock, I always post it there along with anything new that I come up with. So thank you all for watching so much. Please check out the sale and I will see you all next week. Have a good weekend and be safe. We'll see you later.